trade for Derrick Rose, uh, and it kind of accentuated how we're going to approach this free agent year, uh, the direction that we wanted to head towards. Um, a team with a little more experience, uh, a little more competitive power, and a team that we hope will be able to mesh their talents together and uh, provide us an opportunity to challenge in this uh, Eastern Conference. Uh, Steve and I have worked closely with uh, our staff over the last uh, three days of July, actually the week before starting the free agency. Um, and as we've gone through this, we found nothing but uh, very cooperative and ready people to uh, deal and uh, help us put this roster together. Uh, we think the players that we've uh, been able to attract to this team complement each other. Um, and I think the audience that we have in New York will appreciate these players. All right, thank you, Phil. Next, uh, General Manager Steve Mills. Yeah, thanks for coming out today. I think, as, as Phil mentioned, we really, when we made the Derrick Rose trade, that set us down a path that everyone became more energized about the team. We were able to lay out what we wanted to try to get accomplished in free agency. The picture became much clearer for us, and I think we were able to get the guys that we wanted to be part of this group to move forward with. I think we were able to do it by getting, putting together a more competitive team immediately, but also not sacrificing anything moving forward in terms of potential room in, in, with the cap as well as, as draft picks. And, and, and I really think, you know, what happened with us, a guy like Lance Thomas to me was indicative of how players were feeling about our team. I mean, Lance called me probably four times from the time we made the, we made the trade. And then on July 4th, we were, we were in Orlando, and he called me to wish me a happy 4th, but he also told me, listen, Steve, I called my agent. I told him I want to be on the Knicks. I don't want to talk to any other teams. I don't want to have any other conversations. Just figure out a way to make me part of the team. I'm really excited about where you guys are moving. So that was sort of generally the feeling that players had about what we were getting accomplished. So for us, that was a really positive sign. All right, thank you, Steve. And next, uh, head coach Jeff Hornacek. Um, you know, just to piggyback on, on what Phil and Steve had said, uh, a couple weeks ago when they made the trade for Derek, I said, hey, that's great. We got Carmelo, KP, Derek, maybe one or two other guys still under contract, but who's the rest of the roster? And uh, these guys have done a great job of filling in guys uh, that are going to play a, a big role in this team. Uh, there were several holes at that point, and they have plugged them all, uh, I think, perfectly. And I'm excited to, to, to see these guys, uh, the new guys. When you see them on other teams, uh, I admire them from afar, uh, watching them play, what they did for their teams. And I think the biggest thing is that these guys have found team guys, guys that want to win, uh, want to go out there and lay it out there. And uh, that's what's exciting for a coach is to have a group of guys now that we know who we have, and uh, um, after talking to all of them, seeing what they say about the, how excited they are for uh, the, the season, uh, it's, it's, it's a great start. All right, thank you, Coach. Uh, we're now going to do a Q&A with our attending media. If you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand, wait for the microphone to come along, and please introduce yourself so we know who you are. Brian Mahoney from the Associated Press. Uh, Phil or Steve, it's two summers in a row you've had to really make a lot of change, brought in a lot of new players to the team. Um, are you comfortable having to do that? And are you comfortable, I guess, with the you know results will be different this time, better this time? Um, I liked what we did last summer. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough strength to provide a bench, uh, you know, that could cover injuries, fatigue. We have a young rookie that uh, you know kind of hit the wall in the middle of the season, um, so we anticipate that uh, this is the style of what the NBA is going to be like in the coming years. Um, rosters that have to be uh, re-established or re-structured uh, as a free agency comes through, and um, we know that there's 160, 170 guys who are going to be free agents every year. 
So there's going to be a lot of turnover in the NBA, which does preclude that you're not going to have the continuity. Um, and this is one of the difficult things about it. We'd like to have continuity. We're going to try and establish that. And hopefully we'll be able to do a little better job of that in the future. We like this team. Um, <clears throat> Joaquin Noah has been somebody that's been on my list for quite a, quite a long time as far as when he's available. I'd like to have this guy as a leader with the defensive attitude that he carries and the teamwork that he likes to promote. Um, and I think most players in the NBA recognize this and a lot of coaches do also. And so <clears throat> bringing him in as initially our first uh, choice in the free agent market, I think kind of solidified what we wanted to get accomplished. We have offensive players. We need players that want to uh, do the rest of the work. A lot of times uh, that's behind the scenes or maybe not as noticed. And so this is a choice similar to Robin Lopez that we had last year that we hope can be a foundation to our defense and kind of the backbone of our teamwork. Uh, Mark Berman, New York Post. Phil, where do you see the team in the Eastern Conference? Is it definitely a playoff team and maybe even better? And also, what are still your concerns about the roster? Well, I'll, I'll uh, say this about it, that we haven't talked about any of that. Uh, we just talked about being a competitive team. We haven't talked about, oh, you know, we can finish fourth or third or sixth or eighth or whatever. And, we, we won't know that until this team gathers a sense of chemistry, how to play together um, and how to work together in that regard. So those things are still to be known and I, I hate to make those kind of predictions. Um, I, I mean, Steve, you weigh in on this a little bit because I, I think you, you can uh, you know, address Mark, one of your best and favorite reporters here. <laughs> No, I, I, mean, I agree with Phil. We didn't. We didn't. Um, we, we wanted to make a more competitive team. We didn't put uh, anything out there in terms of we should finish in a particular order. Um, in terms of the makeup of the team, we feel good about the guys that we have. But, you know, we feel that you know, even though there's some guys that have you know, you know, injury issues in the past, we think we've added enough depth, and we feel confident as we you know do our due diligence medically on all these guys that we feel we feel good about our ability to withstand the season and uh, be able to have a competitive team. You know, <clears throat> the concerns that, um, you know, we, we had a big body in Robin last year. Uh, Joaquin represents a more mobile, athletic, uh, slender center. We don't have a huge body. Uh, you know, our young kids, uh, Willie, Billy, Hernan Gomez, and uh, Marshall Plumley represent possibilities. We don't have an established veteran behind. Kyle's going to have to take up that role a little bit to start with. Steve Popper from the Bergen Record. Phil, you, you talked before about continuity and culture. Did the way free agency has gone and, and the way the cap has gone, has it had to change the way you approach building this roster? The. You know, the decisive moments were, <clears throat> you know, when we went into um, the postseason and we had to sit and think about, okay, how are we going to get this team activated? Um, you know, we, we've gone with youth, we've gone with some young players, we tried to establish some veterans to play alongside of our group. Uh, we need now to have other um, forceful players that have established games to come to this team to activate our team. And, you know, I saw an opportunity with Rose to have that individual that would come in and take a load off of Carmelo as a scorer so that he's not the prime facet that teams can balance their defense against. They're going to have to, um, you know, really provide a lot more than just, you know, one trick defensive situation. So, you know, Derek gave us that opportunity to move forward a little bit quicker than we anticipated in the past. <clears throat> uh, Phil and Steve, you guys have both mentioned Derek Rose as being a factor in kind of how you approach free agency, but was there anything else that factored in, in how you approach putting this team together? It seems to be in win-now mode as opposed to building a little more slowly, and was that a shift in thinking at all? 
Well, one of my questions to Carmelo was <clears throat> postseason, you know, we haven't made the playoffs. Uh, this is now three years, two years of, since I've been here. Um, and are we moving quickly enough for you in your anticipation of trying to be into a competitive playoff situation? And, you know, I think that was our conversation that established the fact that his desire and, you know, the idea that, you know, he is getting into an, an age range where things have to happen for him, you know. And so we, we decided to activate ourselves a little bit quicker in this regard. So that's yeah, one of the things. And I think as, as we looked at the team, we said, you know, it's really important for KP to be able to develop as a basketball player. And the best thing we can do to help him develop is to put him in a culture where we're winning basketball games. And he's around other good players. And so if you can do that, and again, like I said before, not sacrifice anything moving forward, to me, it's, you're, trying to, you're trying to win now, but you're also, we haven't taken our eye off of creating a culture and creating a group that allows him to develop as a basketball player. Hi, uh, Chris Herring from the Wall Street Journal. Um, I guess I'm, I'm just wondering what, what sort of variance possibilities do you see with this team? I, I think people look at the names on the roster and feel like it could win a considerable amount of games, but it's also a roster that between the point guard, the, the center, and the backup point guard that over the last two years have missed a decent amount of games due to injury. How much did you guys factor that in when you were building the roster and kind of what what level of variance do you feel like there there is or you know in terms of the injuries these guys have had? I missed that third word that you what kind of variance did you say? Variance? Um, no doubt. Um, having looked at uh, Derek Rose and his career um, and then understanding you know this is a young player probably the youngest MVP since that I can remember since, you know, Wes Unsell, who was a rookie and won the MVP, probably was older in, in age than, you know, Derek was, but uh, that's, that's an amazing feature, factor for his career. But last year he had a situation where I thought he was coming back healthy and had the occipital uh, eye injury that kept him out of training camp, he couldn't do any work, had to come back and wear a mask with blurred vision to start a season. I thought that really colored his season. And that he was healthier than everybody was making uh, you know, credit for, giving credit for. This is a young man. I mean, uh, the, the players we have brought on are all young men, even though they've had some injuries. Um, you know, Noah's one of the older guys and you know, kind of the gramps in this group. But uh, his injury was a shoulder injury, which is, you know, repairable. And, and what we look for in this business is what happens with the foundation, the legs. <clears throat> Brandon Jennings, obviously a concern. Achilles tendon is a, is a big concern. But he's had a year, and this is a year for him to do that. And, and, and so we, we're aware of this, and it's also given us the opportunity to take this risk. It's a risk-reward situation. We're aware of this. We think the reward's going to be great, but there is, always is risk, so we're aware of it. Uh, you know, Phil and Steve, um, what are you expecting from the European player, Kuzminskis? What could you tell us about him, and, and why was Courtney Lee such a priority? I'll handle the uh, Kuzminskis. Mindy. No, because I'm going to call him Coos. 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 Or Coos. Um, you know, we, we felt like we needed a, an agile, mobile three that had some uh, ability to shoot distance, spread the court. Uh, he represents a, a player that's uh, probably going to take, you know, uh, you know, acclimating to the NBA. We understand that, but we also think it gives us another uh, opportunity to play smaller, quicker, uh, wider extension of uh, spacing, and uh, you know, provides a, an athlete that I think people are gonna enjoy watching play. Courtney Lee? Yeah, and Courtney was a guy that was at the top of our list from the beginning, and we just, we liked the idea that he was 
the competitive nature that he has as a player, the idea that he comes into a game wanting to defend the best perimeter player on the, on the, on the opposing team. And we needed that kind of uh, uh, defensive energy, um, his ability to make shots. He just was a guy that is an all-around player and someone who has a history of starting in this league. I think when, when we looked at our team last year, were we really, when we looked at our roster, did we look down and say, okay, we have all these guys are legitimate starters in this league. And one of our goals was to come away with when you look at this group, we say everyone, this, they, they have a place in this league as a starter. And, and Courtney definitely fit that bill for us. So he was really important to us from the start. Any other questions? Oh, Chris Herring has a question. Maybe just one last thing. For okay. Phil. Can, can you expand on, the, you, you said that you, you went to Carmelo or you talked with Carmelo and you said, are we moving fast enough? Just in terms of competing, contending, he obviously said that he wanted to try to contend for a championship before his career is over. What, what exactly did you tell him in that response and did that kind of spur you to go look at Derek? Do you want me to paraphrase or try to get the exact quotes? Okay, I'll do my best. Um, I think Carmelo said, you know, I think our first priority is to get a, a point guard. And so we tossed around our ability to go out to get a point guard in the free agent market. And that, that was one of our talks. We talked about how to build or rebuild the team, uh, including other players, but that seemed to be a priority. And as I looked down the list, I did not want to go out and uh, spend a lot of cap dollars chasing what I thought was going to be a very competitive point guard situation in the free agent market. And so we went for plan B, which was uh, really a plan A in my head. I, I like that idea of, of using a trade factor. Losing, you know, Robin Lopez, you know, was, you know, like getting a tooth pulled. It was not easy. We, we didn't want to lose him. We liked him. And Jose's been a guy that we've always liked, even though our fans really never gave him an open market or an open heart. Uh, we, we liked who Jose was. So Jaron has a future. And you know, we made a move last year to, to, to draft him in the uh, draft process that uh, you know, we hoped that he was going to be a starter at some point. In our, our, so we had to give up something. And that's what you have to do in this game to do that. Uh, you hope that the trades work for both teams. And uh, you know that's the way we felt we had to go about this business. So that was the decision. Now that's it. I won't tell you anything more. Ian Begley, ESPN.com. Is, is that it? Was that the last question? Ian, one do you more, want to go? Please. Let's let Ian get Thank it. Thank you. For, for all three of you guys or any of you, uh, what did you think about uh, Kevin Durant choosing to go to Golden <laughs> State? And, and does that impact your approach or thinking at all with this club? Uh, you know, <clears throat> it is what this NBA has turned out to be. It's been, uh, you know, it's open field right now, and that's the way it's going to be for a while. Uh, it looks like that. The players allowed this to go forward instead of smoothing it, so there's tons of money out there, and it gave everybody an opportunity to do some major moves in the NBA. When all this you know, settles down, we'll see how it happens. But it's a very interesting, compelling team uh, that Golden State's put together. And it made us I was, excuse me, Steve. No, go ahead, go ahead. I was part of a team that did this in 2004 with the addition of Carl Malone and Gary Payton, along with Shaq and Kobe, et cetera, uh, that was looked on as accumulating a lot of stars. Uh, didn't work out for us because we had injuries as we go forward. Uh, but those things happen, uh, and it's not the first time. Uh, you know, the first time might have been when Will Chamberlain was traded to Los Angeles and they had Jerry West and Alger Baylor. 
and everybody said, oh, how are we going to beat that team? And the Knicks came back and beat them that, that next year, and Boston beat them the year before. So it's, it doesn't guarantee a championship. It does guarantee a team that's going to be watched. It's going to be very competent. Uh, I think it just made us feel good about our approach in terms of how we dealt with free agency this year. I mean, we knew that, that KD wanted to go to a team that he felt like had a chance to win a championship this upcoming season, and we didn't fit that bill. Now, we know that if he had made a decision to make a one-and-one, one, we would have had a meeting with him because then we would have been one of those teams that he would think about um, for the following year. But once, And that's if he stayed in OKC. But with the idea that he made the decision to go to Golden State, even though he'll do a one-and-one, one, my assumption is that he'll, he'll stay there. Right, from the coaching standpoint, uh, glad he went stayed out west. You know, when you look at this free agent where everybody's signing, you're looking how it fits other teams. Uh, I was in the West long enough to see those teams out there, and uh, that if it wasn't going to be to the Knicks, stay out West was fine by me. Oh, I want Bondi to ask a question, because I don't want the Daily News to say that we ignored them, like happened the last time when you guys foisted something on our... Do you have a question? I was going to ask the Kevin Durant question, but he... Uh, okay. He, he That's stole that from me, so you guys answered it, so I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. We're going to do our photo opportunity with our players. To Steve Mills and Jeff Hornacek, and interesting that Phil Jackson talking about the fact that the Knicks strategy formed at least in part in conversations with Carmelo Anthony about the organization's need perhaps to move faster than it might otherwise because of Melo's closing window and his desire to get this team back into the playoffs. One of the reasons why maybe they went with the win now philosophy and Steve Mills also mentioning the need and desire to surround Kristaps Porzingis with winning type of players so that KP as part of his development can be part of a team that hopefully wins more than it did last year in his rookie season. Interesting to note that if you look at the starting five, which looks pretty set, and then you have Brandon Jennings and Lance Thomas coming off the bench, you wonder what else is going to be off of Phil Jackson's bench in support of players like Joakim Noah, who, of course, is going to be in the starting five. You have Jennings, who we have talked about, comes to the team off a torn Achilles tendon injury played half the year this past year coming back from that injury with Orlando and Detroit off the bench but prior to that in all of his previous years has been a starter so it's going to be interesting to see how Jennings adjusts to playing off the bench and Steve Mills also talking about Lance Thomas and Lance Thomas very much Rebecca wanted to stay as a member of the Knicks and got to feel great for Lance Thomas. He had that great article that he wrote for playerstribune.com about how it's been him and his duffel bag for all these years, and now Lance Thomas has a home. He really has found a home in New York, and I do love that he called up Steve Mills and said, look, I don't want to talk to any other team in the league. I've told my agent that the only place that I want to be is here in New York, and Lance Thomas is such a great character guy, something that they were so big on him last year, so the fact that he wants to stay on this team with these new faces and these new players coming in. It speaks volumes to the character of these guys that the Knicks are currently bringing in. You also have to love the fact that Steve Mills was saying that the picture became very clear once they got Derrick Rose and that everything went from there, that they really felt that they could bring, build around him. And then, of course, the next piece that they got, Joakim Noah. And you have to appreciate the fact that Phil Jackson said, hey, he's a guy who's been on my list for a really long time time that he's the type of player that as soon as he's available I'm going after him and it's because of the defense that he brings the energy that he brings the heart that he brings to the team and really he's a guy that you can trust Bill back there to get those stops and get that done but also play with heart night in and night out he's such an unselfish player and not long ago the defensive player of the year in the league you're going to hear from Noah and Jennings and Lee as we move forward here and comments also uh, from the executives and Jeff Hornacek on Courtney Lee about he is uh, going to be key for the Knicks on defense and hopeful to provide shooting from downtown. Lee in his career has been 38% in his career from three and the Knicks with the mid-range game, Rebecca, of Mello and also D. Rose are going to figure to need some help from downtown. 
That's right. You know, one thing that was also mentioned by Phil Jackson was that part of what they wanted to do here was take the load off of Carmelo Anthony. That yes, they wanted to bring in pieces to win now, and they've done that. But at the same time, when you take a look at what Carmelo Anthony was able to do last season, this is a guy who primarily for the year led the team in points and rebounds and assists. He had a phenomenal year. He did everything on the floor. But you know, he's going to be excited about the fact that he's not going to have to carry the weight of this team on his shoulders. He's got some veteran players with an incredible amount of experience. And of course, he's got one of the rising superstars in the league with uh, Christoph Porzingis, Bill. And Noah, you see there, uh, we're going to hear from him here in a couple of moments. The injury problems uh, oh, yeah. that Noah has gone through well documented, played it only 29 games last year, had the shoulder operated on. But Rebecca, interesting story that Noah ran into Phil Jackson uh, earlier before the free agency period and proved to Phil Jackson that his shoulder was okay. Let's go over to Rebecca now, standing by with the Knicks coach. Thanks, Bill. Well, coach, you know, you've been here for about a month now. Did you ever imagine that one month later this was going to be the roster you were going to be looking at? No, a month ago when they traded for Derek, there was only three or four guys on the roster. So uh, you didn't know how it was going to unfold. Uh, you know, there were some thoughts out there of how it could unfold with different positions. And, you know, Phil and Steve did a great job of filling exactly what we were looking at. And uh, I'm excited to, to get this going. One of the first things that you talked about when you came to New York was making sure that the Knicks took a look at the backcourt this summer. And you were interested in seeing how that was going to come together. Getting Derek Rose and then now Brandon Jennings, how does that get you excited about what you can do? <laughs> well, uh, obviously, I think uh, uh, the NBA game today is a lot of pick and rolls um, you know we're not going to do as many we still want to, to run some of the aspects that uh, uh, they, they've had here before with the triangle but uh, it gives us a threat you know with Brandon and Derek to be able to, to break down the defense uh, open it up for some of our other guys and I think the biggest thing for me is seeing the roster the way it's shaped up is if I'm an opposing coach I'm looking at this team going into the game saying okay who are we focusing on are we going to try to stop Carmelo tonight? Are we going to try to, to stop uh, uh, KP? Uh, so the way I look at it is they can only do so much. Somebody's going to have opportunities, and the more talent you have, the better. How does that affect what you think you can do in terms of the things that you can run, knowing that you're always going to have a prolific score open? Yeah, it gives us a lot of uh, a lot of different things we can do. Uh, I think in the in the triangle uh, uh, offense, uh, the automatic offense, it could lead to anybody having it. And so, uh, you know, some nights, some guys might have a big night, uh, depending on the way the defense plays. And other nights, uh, you know, another guy might. And, and we can open it up. Uh, I feel that we're a pretty good defensive team. We have length. We can do a different, uh, different stuff with maybe some, some traps, some zone. Uh, get us out in the open court and then let the, let these guys ability take over and speaking of the defense bringing in a guy like Joakim Noah How does it affect what you can do knowing that you guy you guys have that him as a last resort there? Well, uh, not only a last resort. He's going to be kind of the head of that defense He's going to be yelling out to guys. I, I love Joe's uh, uh, Energy uh, the way he's out there yelling at all the guys what's happening uh, Because the big guy is the the guy that's sitting there watching the whole play develop, you know, he's on that back line and so for him to, to be able to help direct some of our guys defensively, hey, get to the left, rotate to the right, whatever it is, uh, that's a huge thing for us. And outside of just the X's and the O's, something that has been so important to this team is bringing in the right kind of guys, the culture guys, the guys who want to win, play unselfishly. What's your impression of spending time now with these guys that, now that you've had a chance to meet them? Uh, so far, so good. Uh, I, I think everybody's always tells you we want to win we'll do whatever it takes uh, now they have to follow through on that and every guy I've talked to has said hey you know I, I love I love the moves I love uh, uh, the way the team looks we, we if we can just play together and play unselfishly we can be a darn good basketball team and uh, for a coach to hear that uh, you know that's what we'll emphasize all year the moves not quite finished yet what else would you like to see well, um, I think we have pretty much uh, uh, a, a good position in it at every spot. You're always looking for more guys that, in case somebody gets hurt, some who can step up. Uh, and if somebody has to step up, who's the next guy in line? So until you get the final 15th spot filled, you're looking for the best guy out there. I think we have most of the positions covered. Uh, so whatever Phil and, and Steve can come up with in those last p positions uh, uh, will be good.
Coach, thanks for your time. You certainly have a lot to be excited about. Bill, let's shoot it back over to you. Okay, Rebecca, so right now Knicks have 12 players on the roster and there's mutual interest between the Knicks and Sasha Vujicic about possibly bringing him back to play for the Knicks once again next year. We're back with more. We'll hear from some of the new Knicks as we continue right after this. Stay with us, everyone.